Hi, this is Jim Feist in Las Vegas. I want to tell you a little bit about this coming weekend. I had um, a big winner with the Texans last week. That was a systems release, usually $250. Sold it to many followers for only $100. Easy winner, 32 to 7. I see another one coming up this week. Same exact situation as far as the system, not the same system, but another system. And the game might actually be my preseason game of the year, and I'll tell you why. It depends on line movement. You have to watch the lines, and you have to watch and listen and read what the coaches are doing. So the system matches up. So I'm waiting to release it right now to see what I can find out from the coaching staffs is what their plans are and watch line movements. So beware, that could be up online. Big play, jimfeist.com. You definitely want to tune in for that. And make sure you sign up for text plays, et cetera, et cetera. You want to be on top of what I get a hold of each and every week because we're kicking some butt in the preseason. I think the record is 11-4. and four. It's just absolutely awesome. Uh, yeah, we had a lucky one the other night with the total, but you do have lucky ones that you, unlucky ones that you lose as well. Let's talk a little bit about the big controversy in Cleveland. Well, if you were going to pick a team that would draft the biggest bonehead out of college, you might pick Cleveland because it's been a hundred years since that that city has won anything in any sport. Johnny Manziel, the kid that is entitled and he doesn't have the work ethic, and he thinks, you know what he thinks doesn't smell, okay? He he just is not ready for prime time. He's too young. He's got talent, but the problem is, in the NFL, you need to be bigger, and you need to be stronger, and you need to learn how to slide, and you need to be able to stay in the pocket and find receivers. It's not a league where you can run around and get hit, like RG3 did last night, which is absolutely ridiculous for him because he got hurt already. He knows what it's like to use, lose a year, blow out an ACL, whatever, and he was doing the same thing again last night. So I'm making a prediction that neither one of these guys are going to be anything that we really are going to write home about in this league. They're not the long-term solution for either one of these teams. Cousins for Washington should be the starter. And I don't know what to do with uh, Cleveland. Hoyer... Looked good last year in a limited amount of games, three games, but he did work under Brady and Belichick years ago. He has a lot more experience at that level. And maybe the pressure of drafting a Manziel and then threatening what Hoyer thought was his job to begin with, and then he didn't earn it. I mean, maybe that pressure has cracked him up. He absolutely looks terrible. They signed Rex Grossman, and quite frankly, he might be the answer for Cleveland short term because these guys look absolutely awesome. Awful. They have a kid came off the bench last night who in college, we all saw him play in college if you follow college ball, Connor Shaw, 24-1 and one TDs to interceptions. Spurrier was his coach. He thinks very highly of him. I don't know why this guy didn't get drafted. He needs a shot. He needs a shot. There are good players out there with bigger hearts, bigger, better work ethics than a Johnny Manziel who thinks he's entitled to everything. I predict he doesn't make it. I think Connor Shaw could make it if you give him a shot. Bortles, he was uh, drafted high, and he looks real good. Bridgewater, Bridgewater scaled out better. Even on the dra- even on the Browns draft sheets, he looked better on paper, but they switched gears and took Manziel. Big mistake. They'll pay for that down the road. we got some games coming up this weekend. This is week three. This is what we call dress rehearsal. Now, some coaches treat it, as it's almost a regular season game because they want to see their team, the ones with the ones, et cetera, et cetera, the top quarterback with the ones, against ones, and they play the game like two quarters or maybe even three quarters like they would a regular season game. That's one of the things that I do is I keep on track of which coaches plan to do that and which coaches do not. Obviously, if you can get one that does, against one that doesn't, you probably have a little bit of an overlay there and you have an easy winner. Or if they're an underdog, and that happens too, and you have an upset winner. Philadelphia, Pittsburgh's at Philadelphia. Obviously, this is an in-state rivalry. I don't think they really care too much about it, but 
uh, Philadelphia has an interesting situation going on there. I don't know if nobody's really talking about this. Last year, Foles, uh, 27 touchdowns and two interceptions. This year, he has not looked that good. And they have Mark Sanchez, who, guess what, was a little bit like the prima donna that came out of California years earlier with uh, Matt Leiner, but now he's a little bit older, and he's matured a little bit, and he's changed cities. He's now in Philadelphia, and he is actually outplaying Nick Foles, and he is the perfect guy to run the Chip Kelly offense. So we may very well see a change in Philadelphia at quarterback. And I'm not knocking Foles because I really like him, and he may hold on to the job. But right now, maybe the pressure from Sanchez is bothering him as well because he's not playing that well. You go down to Jacksonville. That's on Friday. He goes to Detroit. you got two coaches here, brand new, Caldwell, who has a lot of experience. And you got the defensive coordinator out of Seattle, the championship defensive uh, coordinator out of the Seattle Seahawks at Jacksonville, Bradley. This guy's tough. He's focused. He knows how to keep this team on track. I expect Jacksonville to be very dangerous this year. Nah, they're not going to win 11, 12 games. I know that. But they could be a point spread champion. Look out for that. I'm not so sure about Caldwell because when he was successful in football as a head coach, he had a guy that was really a head coach. He was at quarterback, Peyton Manning. So I'm not too sure what he's going to do with the team in Detroit, who needs a lot of discipline. They have some guys on that team are very difficult to manage. Carolina at New England, Cam Newton coming off the surgery. I look for New England to have a big year. Not so much with Carolina. I think they've lost too much at wide receiver, and we don't know how Cam's going to be after that surgery. 